I'm really looking forward to Saturday night, Dad. I hate to say goodbye, too. Bye. Uh, Seinfeld, uh, you made a reservation for a midsize, and she's a small. <laughs> okay, buddy boy, here it is. You hide my clothes, I'm wearing everything you own. Beyond the glitz of stunning on-screen performance and the initial paycheck it earns, there's much more to being a TV actor. Luckily, for the good ones out there, lies a sweet gold mine of something called rerun royalties that keeps the cash flowing long after the cameras stop rolling. But it's not all perfect for everyone. While some are swimming in cash, others are left counting pennies. There's this one actress in particular. Today she lives off the reruns, but the number is depressing. The annual rerun payouts of your favorite classic sitcom stars might just surprise you. Join us as we unveil the secrets number 15. Maureen McCormick. Known for her role as the eldest Brady sister, Maureen McCormick also appeared as a formidable contender on season 23 of Dancing with the Stars at 60 years old in 2016. Captured in candid photos after grueling rehearsals in Los Angeles, McCormick, pushing her limits in a fierce dance competition, appeared utterly exhausted. Competing against Olympic gymnasts and pro athletes, she left it all on the dance floor. In one emotional episode, her Viennese waltz left judges in awe, with her former sitcom mother, Florence Henderson, cheering her on for a heartwarming Brady Bunch reunion. McCormick's life has been far from a sitcom. In her 2018 tell-all, Here's the Story, Surviving Marsha Brady and Finding My True Voice, she revealed battles with addiction, depression, and bulimia. Now she leads a quiet life near Los Angeles with her husband and daughter. No stranger to reality TV, McCormick won Celebrity Fit Club in 2007, shedding 38 pounds. Despite weight fluctuations, she remains resilient. She also has the nostalgia vote, with fans from the Brady Bunch era cheering for their childhood crush and idol. While specific figures for her earnings from The Brady Bunch and its reruns are not publicly disclosed, during the original run of The Brady Bunch from 1969 to 1974, McCormick likely received a salary in the tens of thousands of dollars per episode, but the exact amount is unknown. The cast for The Brady Bunch revealed that they haven't received anything in rerun profits in years. McCormick's net worth is estimated at around $4 million. In any case, her journey, from Marsha Brady to the dance floor, evokes memories for fans who grew up with the Brady Bunch. This is not all. There's much more from where that came from. Number 14. The Seinfeld Cast Seinfeld is still a powerhouse in primetime television. It etched its place in history with a fan base that refuses to fade away since its departure from the airwaves in 1998. That was over two decades ago. This show about nothing continues to exert its influence on pop culture as the reruns persist. So how much cash is the Seinfeld cast raking in from this perpetual loop of laughs? The money game varies among the cast members. The show's architects, Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David, pull in the lion's share every time the show hits the rerun circuit. Netflix recently acquired Seinfeld for a whopping $425 million but exact figures remain in the shadows. Jerry Seinfeld, the maestro himself, sits on $440 million from Seinfeld. And this was before the Netflix deal. Larry David, his partner in comedy crime, also boasts a fortune in the hundreds of millions. But the exact sum remains a mystery. But hold on, Jerry and Larry are not the sole beneficiaries of Seinfeld's cash flow. Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Jason Alexander, and Michael Richards have had their fair share. However, the road to financial bliss wasn't always smooth for the entire cast. Julia, Jason, and Michael initially found themselves excluded from the grand pot of royalties. During the final season, they faced off with NBC Entertainment Chief Warren Littlefield, demanding $1 million per episode. The negotiations prevailed, and their salary skyrocketed, but the share of show royalties remained out of reach. Number 13. Charlie Sheen Known for iconic his role as Charlie Harper in Two and a Half Men, Sheen has a unique journey to his fairly substantial rerun earnings. In 2011, Sheen faced a public breakdown due to alcohol and drug abuse. 
He openly criticized the show's creators and became very hard to work with, leading to his dismissal from Two and a Half Men. Despite this controversy, Sheen still had a claim to royalties when the show was rerun. However, Sheen chose to sell his rights to the royalties for a lump sum. He pocketed a whopping $27 million for this. Following his exit from Two and a Half Men, Sheen embarked on a new project called Anger Management. The show premiered in 2012 and marked Sheen's return to television. In Anger Management, Sheen played the role of Charlie Goodson, a former baseball player turned therapist specializing in anger management. While anger management didn't reach the same level of cultural prominence as Two and a Half Men, it was noteworthy for its unique distribution model. The show sold 10 episodes to a traditional network, FX, and retained the rights to sell the remaining 90 episodes to other networks and streaming services. This model allowed the show to be profitable more quickly. In terms of estimated numbers, the deal with FX was reported to be around $600,000 per episode for the 10-episode initial commitment. However, the subsequent 90-episode syndication package reportedly generated even more revenue, with estimates standing at $100 million or more. Number 12. The Sopranos Cast Let's step away from comedy for a while. The Sopranos was and continues to be a groundbreaking television series revolving around the life of Tony Soprano, a mob boss juggling the challenges of running a crime family with the complexities of his personal life. The show gained iconic status for its nuanced portrayal of characters, blending crime drama with psychological depth. Plus, the actors behind the unforgettable characters made serious bank during its six-season run. But here's the twist. While they earned a hefty sum up front, residuals didn't come knocking. The cast received a fat lump sum up front, but no ongoing residuals. James Gandolfini, the formidable Tony Soprano, took home a jaw-dropping $725,000 per episode. As for Steven Van Zandt, the multi-talented musician and Soprano star, he banked millions not just from acting but also from his extensive music career. Dominic Chinese, who appeared on screen as Junior, a vital storyline character, boasts a net worth of $15 million. The Sopranos cast as a whole commanded a jaw-dropping $1.3 million per episode by the last season. The late James Gandolfini owned the crown as the highest-paid soprano actor, raking in a mind-boggling $70 million in his final year. The soprano actors, while not drowning in residuals, still pull in a solid $30,000 to $1 million per year. Not too shabby, right? Even without reruns, they sure made their mark, and the numbers speak for themselves. Number 11. John Cryer As Two and a Half Men gained immense popularity, the stars, especially John Cryer, leveraged their increasing fame to renegotiate their salaries. Throughout the show's run, John Cryer's per episode reached an impressive peak of $620,000 per episode. The dynamics shifted when Charlie Sheen left the show, making way for Ashton Kutcher to step in as the new co-lead. Despite the changes in the cast, Two and a Half Men continued its successful run and ultimately concluded after 12 seasons. However, the financial journey for the main cast members didn't end with the series finale. The stars, including John Cryer, continued to receive substantial earnings. John Cryer received a portion of the rerun money amounting to a staggering $20 million. This residual income reflects the enduring popularity of Two and a Half Men. Number 10. Jim Parsons Riding the wave of success from the Big Bang Theory, Jim Parsons isn't just cashing in on his original run as Sheldon Cooper. He has also amassed a whopping net worth of $160 million, all thanks to his iconic role in the smash hit CBS sitcom. Talk about hitting the jackpot. This gig not only earned him four primetime Emmys, but also made him the highest paid actor on television for quite a stretch. In the inaugural season, Parsons pocketed $60,000 per episode, tallying up to over a million bucks for the entire season. As the show gained momentum, so did Jim's bank account. Seasons two through four saw his paycheck soar to $250,000 per episode. This got him a hefty $17.5 million for those 17 episodes. For seasons five through seven, he moved up to $325,000 per episode. After this, Jim Parsons hit the million-dollar mark per episode until the series ended with season 12. 
As if the TV cash flow wasn't enough, Parsons, along with co-stars Kaylee Cuoco and Johnny Galecki, secured a deal that granted them a 1% share in the show's back-end earnings in its later seasons. Selling the rights for the distribution of the show brought in a staggering $1 billion during the first year, showering each actor with an extra $10 million. The main cast can expect a cool $10 million annually for the next decade, not to forget the awards. Parsons' trophy shelf is nothing short of impressive, with nine Emmy nominations and four wins for The Big Bang Theory, plus nods for his roles in The Normal Heart and Hollywood. Critics' Choice Television Awards, Gold Derby Awards, a Golden Globe, People's Choice Awards, you name it, Parsons has conquered it. Number 9. Mayim Bialik Mayim Bialik first gained prominence as Blossom in the show Blossom, alongside co-star Joey Lawrence, and the series ran for an impressive five seasons. By the end of this run, Bialik undoubtedly commanded a substantial income per episode. Matching her previous success, Mayim Bialik joined one of the biggest sitcoms in television history, The Big Bang Theory. And that's when her earnings skyrocketed. Despite not being one of the primary leads, Bialik played an integral role in the show's success, earning a commendable $200,000 per episode. Interestingly, her generous paycheck was partly the result of other cast members agreeing to take a pay cut. Beyond her acting prowess, Mayim Bialik has achieved remarkable feats outside of the entertainment realm. Much like her on-screen character Amy Farrah Fowler, Bialik obtained a PhD in neuroscience. She also became one of the hosts of Jeopardy! Even after The Big Bang Theory concluded, Bialik received a substantial income from reruns of the show earning approximately $10 million annually in royalties. Number 8. Kelsey Grammer A towering figure in the entertainment industry, Kelsey Grammer boasts a career that's both enduring and record-breaking. Once the top earner in TV, Grammer's journey from the iconic Cheers sitcom to the pinnacle of Frasier has left an indelible mark on the small screen. Even today, Grammer hasn't faded into oblivion. Instead, he has navigated screens big and small, with diverse roles from X-Men to unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Starting at Juilliard in the mid-70s, Grammer made his mark on Broadway by the early 80s, particularly in Shakespearean productions. However, it was cheers that catapulted him to stardom, turning a planned six-episode stint into a regular role. Fast forward to today, Kelsey Grammer sits on an impressive net worth of $80 million. The lion's share comes from his time on Frasier, the NBC show that earned him a record-breaking $1.6 million per episode for the final two seasons. This payday made Grammer the highest-paid TV actor of his time. With residuals from previous seasons and ongoing reruns, Frasier continues to line Grammer's pockets significantly. Grammer enjoys a steady stream of income from royalties, reportedly raking in a staggering $113 million annually from Frasier alone. From Cheers to Frasier, his journey is not just a tale of success, but a masterclass in turning TV stardom into a multi-million dollar empire. Number 7. Bob Denver Bob Denver, the star of Gilligan's Island, may not be the first name that comes to mind when thinking about royalty earnings, but his work on the show turned out to be incredibly lucrative in the years that followed its original run. Interestingly, Gilligan's Island wasn't an immediate hit during its initial airing. The show wrapped up in 1967 after just three seasons. However, the real success came when the show sold distribution rights, turning it into a cultural touchstone and a beloved part of American pop culture. The show's intense popularity proved to be a financial boon for Bob Denver. Even though he wasn't making big bucks during the show's initial airing, the widespread appeal in the years that followed translated into substantial royalties. Bob Denver passed away in 2005, but until then, he amassed an impressive $100 million in royalties over the 50 years after the show concluded its original run. Even after his death, his estate continues to receive royalty checks for Denver's work from the 1960s. Number 6. Friends cast. Friends is a beloved sitcom that graced television screens for a decade. The show follows the lives of six friends, Rachel, Ross, Monica, Chandler, Joey, and Phoebe, as they navigate the ups and downs of life in New York City. The show's iconic status stems from its winning formula of humor, relatable characters, and enduring friendships. 
Premiering in 1994, Friends resonated with audiences worldwide for its witty writing, memorable catchphrases, and the chemistry among its ensemble cast. It not only set the standard for ensemble sitcoms, but also captured the essence of a generation. Naturally, the Friends cast continues to reel in substantial earnings. These sitcom legends are each pocketing a hefty $20 million annually from syndicated reruns, courtesy of Warner Brothers Television. This amounts to 2% of the staggering $1 billion in revenue the studio pulls in each year. Reflecting on the early days, the cast earned a modest $22,500 per episode in the first season. Negotiations led to raises, with the cast banking a substantial $225,000 per episode by season six. The groundbreaking payday came with a whopping $1 million per episode deal for seasons nine and 10, resulting in each cast member pocketing almost $17 million by the series finale. Following the conclusion of Friends, Matt LeBlanc, who portrayed the lovable Joey Tribbiani, continued his journey in the entertainment industry by headlining the spin-off series, Joey. Premiering in 2004, the show explored Joey's life in Los Angeles as he pursued an acting career. Despite LeBlanc's charismatic performance, Joey faced challenges and garnered mixed reviews. Ultimately, the show concluded after two seasons in 2006, while the spin-off did not achieve the same level of success as its predecessor, LeBlanc's commitment to reprising his iconic character reflects his dedication to expanding the Friends universe. In any case, rewinding to the post-2004 era after the show concluded, residuals from syndication started pouring in for the cast, who had already been earning a sweet $1 million per episode. The Fabulous Six, Courtney Cox, Jennifer Aniston, David Schwimmer, Lisa Kudrow, Matt LeBlanc, and Matthew Perry are all enjoying a 2% cut, which makes up to an astonishing $20 million each per year. Netflix was so enamored with Friends that they forked out a monumental $100 million to keep streaming the show through 2019. As HBO Max emerged, Warner Media invested $425 million for exclusive streaming rights. Warner Brothers teamed up with Bright, Kaufman, and Crane Productions, ensuring a continuous cash flow. Fast forward to today, and the Friends cast is still laughing their way to the bank, earning nearly $20 million annually thanks to residuals and syndication. Reruns continue to outshine their current projects, contributing to Warner Brothers Television's annual $1 billion revenue from Friends merchandise and other savvy agreements. However, all has not been good for the cast lately. Actor Matthew Perry, who played Chandler Bing on the show, tragically passed away on October 28, 2023, at the age of 54. The Los Angeles County Medical Examiner's Office revealed that Perry's death resulted from the acute effects of ketamine in an accidental incident at his Pacific Palisades home. The autopsy identified drowning, coronary artery disease, and the influence of buprenorphine as contributing factors, categorizing the manner of death as an accident. Despite Perry's reported 19 months of sobriety, the examination disclosed his engagement in ketamine infusion therapy to address depression and anxiety. The actor had openly struggled with substance abuse. However, he played a pivotal role in the iconic sitcom Friends, where his wit and sarcasm as Chandler left an enduring mark during the show's dominant 10-season run from 1994 to 2004. Perry's untimely demise is the final chapter of his battle with addiction detailed in his 2022 memoir, shedding light on the darker aspects behind the joy he brought to his fans. Number 5. The Simpsons Cast the Simpsons cast has undoubtedly secured their places among the wealthiest in Hollywood, thanks to the show's unprecedented longevity and enduring popularity. Throughout the show's remarkable 34-season run, the main cast of voice actors has seen a substantial increase in their earnings. In the early days, each actor was already making an impressive $30,000 per episode. As the show continued to soar in popularity, the cast successfully negotiated salary hikes. The figures climbed to $50,000 at one point and later reached $100,000 for the 13th and 14th seasons. Season 15 saw another raise, this time to a range between $250,000 and $360,000 per episode. However, Fox reduced the number of episodes in each season. 
The negotiations didn't stop there. At one instance, the cast collectively demanded a staggering $500,000 per episode. Eventually, the figure was negotiated down to $440,000. Facing the potential threat to the show's continuation due to salary demands, the cast agreed to a slight pay cut after this, settling at $300,000 per episode. The voice actors also secured an additional windfall by negotiating a $10 million payout for reruns. Number 4. Betty White Betty White, the beloved star of classics like The Golden Girls and Hot in Cleveland, left an indelible mark on the entertainment world. Even in her passing at the age of 99, just three weeks shy of her centennial celebration on December 31, 2021, her legacy lives on and so does her financial influence. During her seven-season stint as Rose Nyland on The Golden Girls from September 14, 1985 to May 9, 1992, Betty White became everyone's favorite on-screen grandmother. The NBC sitcom was centered around the lives of four older women sharing a house in Miami. While her exact salary from the show remains undisclosed, it's reported that Betty raked in $3 million annually from reruns. Based on these numbers, she amassed a staggering $87 million from Golden Girls reruns alone between 1992 and her demise in 2021. Betty White was also a shrewd investor in real estate. The $5 million Brentwood Mansion, where she spent her final moments, is part of her estate. White's estate had a net worth of $75 million in real estate holdings, totaling around $10 million. While the specific details of her estate plan remain confidential, we know that she had substantial assets distributed across properties, bank accounts, and her extensive collection of books. Notably, White's passion for animal advocacy raises speculation about the inclusion of a pet trust to ensure the well-being of her beloved animals. With no biological children and her husband Alan Ludden having passed away in 1981, White's estate is anticipated to contribute significantly to the animal charities she fervently supported throughout her life, showcasing her thoughtful and thorough approach to estate planning. Betty White also left behind a wealth of entertainment memories. As we bid farewell to a true icon, Betty White's financial legacy lives on, ensuring that her impact transcends the screen and continues to make a difference in the causes she holds dear. Number 3. Tim Allen Tim Allen's journey from a struggling comedian to a household name in the television industry is nothing short of remarkable, especially with his pivotal role in home improvement. Before landing the role of Tim Taylor in the show, Allen faced a bunch of challenges, including at one point, incarceration for selling cocaine. However, his gig at home improvement was the turning point his career needed. The show, partly based on his stand-up comedy, resonated well with audiences, securing its place as a monster hit for eight seasons. During its successful run, Home Improvement consistently boasted high ratings, leading to substantial financial rewards for its cast. Tim Allen's salary reached an impressive $1.25 million per episode towards the end of the show's tenure. Allen also continued to reap the benefits of Home Improvement through rerun royalties. He has earned $18 million from reruns of the show alone. This financial windfall, coupled with the success of his other projects like Toy Story and Last Man Standing, has catapulted Allen to considerable wealth. Number 2. Alex Borstein Renowned as the voice behind Lois Griffin on the enduringly popular animated series Family Guy, Alex Borstein's career has proven exceptionally lucrative with a continuous stream of substantial residuals for an extended period. Her career has now reached new heights with the overwhelming success of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. While this has expanded her recognition beyond her voice talent, it is Family Guy that remains her most triumphant venture. Given the show's remarkable longevity, spanning more than two decades, Borstein has undoubtedly amassed a considerable fortune from its initial broadcasts and the substantial residuals she continues to receive. Family Guy's enduring popularity contributes significantly to her annual income. But there's more. She now has to share this money. Her divorce from Jackson Douglas has been finalized. The couple, who wed in 1999, will equally share residuals and royalties from work completed during their marriage. She earns $220,000 monthly from royalties, but this will now be split between the two. 
The financial settlement also includes the equal division of multiple bank accounts totaling $5.2 million, joint ownership of three accounts, and specific assets like condominium units, a house in Washington State, and an apartment in New York City. Number 1. Lucille Bell Lucille Ball not only captivated audiences with her legendary on-screen performances, but left an indelible mark behind the camera. Collaborating with her husband Desi Arnaz, she co-founded and operated Desilu Productions, becoming the first woman ever to run a major TV studio. On top of this, Ball's on-screen career spanned decades as an incredible comedic actress, earning her 13 Emmy nominations, five wins, stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, the Cecil B. DeMille Lifetime Achievement Award, and several other accolades. Her most iconic television venture was undoubtedly I Love Lucy, a classic sitcom where she starred alongside Desi as the unforgettable duo Lucy and Ricky Ricardo. Debuting in 1957, this was the number one show in the country for an astounding four seasons. Even more impressive were the substantial financial successes she garnered from rerun royalties, earning a staggering $17 million annually. Following her death in 1989, a contentious estate battle unfolded among her inheritors, primarily involving her children, Lucy Arnaz and Desi Arnaz Jr., and her second husband, Gary Morton, along with his wife, Susie McAllister. McAllister sold Ball's possessions, triggering a legal dispute as Ball's children sought to reclaim jewelry, awards, and letters from the sales, prompting a restraining order at one point. Ultimately, Lucy Arnaz negotiated a deal with the auction house to reclaim Ball's Lifetime Achievement Awards, intending to donate them to a museum. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't miss this video you see on your screen right now. It's truly unbelievable.